October 24th is also known as the World Polio Day, which is marked to highlight the global efforts towards a polio-free world. The day also honors the contributions of those on the front lines in the fight to eradicate the polio virus from every corner of the globe. The day also encourages a widespread use of safe and effective vaccines to curb the poliomyelitis, commonly known as polio. According to the World Health Organization, polio cases have decreased by over 99% since 1988, from an estimated 350,000 cases to 22 reported cases in 2017. This drastic reduction is the result of global effort to eradicate the disease. In 2020, only three countries in the world have reported a transmission of polio, which are Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Nigeria. And joining us live is Dr. Anis Siddiqui, you, uh, UNICEF Health uh, Polio Manager. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Anis. Thank you very much and for inviting me as well. Uh, so I'm kicking off with talking about Nigeria. The country has been certified polio-free. How delighted is UNICEF, considering how much effort it took to get here? Yeah, I think um, this certification, uh, achievement of polio-free certification is a major feat uh, for Nigeria. Like any other Nigerian um, and the government of Nigeria, we are equally delighted um, because uh, the effort started in 1995. And you can imagine that after 25 years of effort, the certification achieved. And, and it was just like a million, million of dollars and billion nairas, um, more than 100,000 vaccinators on the ground, and um, massive uh, community engagement um, years after years. So we can say this is a huge achievement for the children uh, because in 1995 when polio eradication activity started and campaign started almost 75,000 children were paralyzed in Africa and today no paralysis due to polio so you can imagine that you are able to uh, see that um, this the um, achievement towards the mind, mankind and children are more safer than before. Okay, is there any fear that you know, Nigeria might lose this status again? Obviously, there are risks. Um, there are two countries, India, Pakistan and Afghanistan, you also mentioned that they have uh, their endemic to polio. That means they have active wild polio virus transmission. Um, and of course, we know the virus itself and um, doesn't require any passport and visa to travel anywhere in the world. So um, there is a possibility that wild polio virus may transmit from those countries to Nigeria. And there are two ways to protect it. One is that we have to maintain the immunity status for children very high. Another is that we have to maintain uh, the travel, strict travel restrictions. People coming from those areas should be screened and should be ensured for polio vaccination. And, you know, the border security in terms of vaccine um, is, should be ensured. The another issue is that there are a lot of uh, pilgrimages from those countries to um, some common places where Nigerians are also traveling. So we have to ensure those Nigerians are going for pilgrimages such as Hajj, uh, to perform Hajj in Makkah, they should be vaccinated against polio. So there are a few measures we can um, take and Nigeria as a country can take to protect um, the polio-free certification. Otherwise, there is a risk um, of uh, losing the status. All right. 25 years is, is no joke. Um, it's taken so much. It's taken a lot of effort and funding um, and um, immunization to get to where we are today. What are the things that you feel we need to reflect on as we join the world uh, to mark the World Polio Day? Yes, uh, I think, as you mentioned, that this 25 years is like um, it's a very long effort. There are many other countries having the similar experience. Uh, they made a huge, long effort. 
uh, if we introspect that why it took so long in Nigeria, one reason is that Nigeria um, is not having a very good routine immunization coverage. We have um, our uh, interpretation is that and also survey is saying that uh, the coverage is um, very low and that was not able to support polio eradication activities. So we have to really focus more on the supplementary immunization activity due to, uh, um, I mean, using while, um, oral polio vaccine. I mean, if you consider if we had a very good routine immunization system, it would not take so long time. So this is one reflection is that we need to really improve our routine immunization system in Nigeria and ensuring that um, that the parents and caregivers understand the importance that there is a vaccination site in the community, in the health facility, and they needed to bring their children out there. The second, in, uh, the, on the positive um, uh, side, I see that uh, we are ahead of Pakistan and Afghanistan, uh, and that is because of the massive community uh, involvement. Uh, the community engagement and strategies uh, work very well. The um, faith leaders, both Christian and Muslims, the northern traditional leaders are very, very supportive to the program. And in fact, during the polio campaign, in a day, in a, in a, in a, in a row of three days, we have to vaccinate 60 million children. And 60 million children were reached at the household level. You can imagine the massive operation it won't be possible without a community participation, without a robust community engagement. And of course, Nigeria actually did very well and it was almost, we were uh, polio free in 2016. It was, um, the last case was 2014. And then 2016, 17, it was almost planned for certification. But it did not work out because there was a, uh, some cases in, uh, in Borno state. So um, that derailed uh, a bit the polio certification process, but uh, I mean, I, I, I mean, as a development agency, UNICEF and other polio partners feel confident that over last four years there's a huge surveillance improvement in Borno State as well as the security compromise area in hard to reach area. So altogether, uh, it was really, really a great achievement. And I see that the res resilient by the government, the, by the community, is a great deal, which we showed that the whole world has appreciated. All right, Dr. Wanes, before we let you go, um, how would you encourage uh, the Nigerian government to not relax um, after we've achieved this current status? And of course, what would your quick thoughts be to Nigerian parents um, and expectant mothers at a time like this? Yeah, there is no chance of relaxation or complacency, as I said, that polio, while polio virus may come back. And also, we have some source of environmental uh, situation which may give rise to polio-like symptoms due to other diseases. So we have to ensure very good, very strong routine immunization system. As I mentioned, the parents and caregivers should come forward and ensure their children are vaccinated. Due to COVID, the vaccination overall immunization system has been disrupted. Um, there are issues with the supply. There are issues with um, uh, demand. But you know, thankfully, the now government of Nigeria is able to restore the services. UNICEF is very happy to tell you that we were able to help government by ensuring uh, vaccine um, shipment from um, outside of country and we, we transported and shipped inside the country so that there is no shortage of vaccine. And uh, with this, uh, I should say that the, the parents and fair caregivers should take the responsibility for their own children and demand for vaccine and come to the vaccination site and outreach site and primary health care sites and ensure the vaccination for their children. Dr. Anis Siddiqui, thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you very much.